Hey, hey. So, I thought you might be interested. I've got a Bose T1 tone match on my bench at the moment. It needs some repair. Um, it's turning on. Well, it, originally, actually, it was turning on and staying on for a little while and then turning off. And you could turn it back on, but now it doesn't seem, once it's been delivered to me, it just turned on once and gave up the ghost. This thing is not designed to be repaired. Let's just put it that way. Um, let's have a look at the back. It's got um, four inputs, three of which are XLR or TRS. There's a TRS line in there. Four individual preamp outputs. There's quite a bit of DSP involved in this little mixer. Um, and you've got some master outputs. I'm not sure if they're stereo on one jack, or I'm, I'm assuming they're left and right. It's just one of them's labelled AUX, and one of them's labelled master. There's also USB for updates, and this power input, which is usually clad in this Motric RJ45 um, casing, um, supplies power. So I've just been screaming it out to see whether I can find out whether the power is going in there, as it should be. And it is. Uh, but unfortunately, um, when you turn it on, you can see the phantom power light, but nothing, no choo-chi on, um, on the screen. So, anyway, I thought you might be interested in having a little look at this. Um, it's quite heavily populated. Um, it's definitely not designed to be... To be serviced, let's just put it that way. Um, everything looks okay. There's a few kind of bodgy things going on. Um, one thing that I, I, I thought was particular interest was this um, little section here. And I'm wondering whether we might have some issues here. I'm just going to have a proper look and see what these are. That might be a fuse. Oh, no, it says L2, so that's probably an inductor. Um, hmm, yeah. Very suspect. Um, yeah, so uh, this is how the general thing thing works. Uh, it's got these big long buttons which pop out through the front panel. This is there, and they are one of these little contact button things, you know, with the with the rubber the rubber pad. Um, let's have a look at the back. Equally as heavily populated. Some snot here, some silicon it looks like, holding down holding down these caps. Um, we've got Sienna IOPCB here, which looks like this is the removable PCB. Might take that off later. Um, I think I've already taken it off actually when I was looking at this earlier on. But yeah, it's chock full of ICs, double sided board, probably multi layer. Um, boo boo boo, let's have a look. What have we got? Focus. Sienna, main PCB, Rev 2, May 2009. So it's had a few, a few years of. Of existence. I don't know whether this was built in 2009, but that's when the PCB revision was done. Um, yeah. So questionable. It looks basically like there's power coming in, uh, but not getting to the screen for sure. And apparently, it's just shutting the system down. I'm not holding out too much hope for these things because. By the time I've spent long enough to figure out what's going on in one of these such a densely packed board, um, it's not going to be worth doing really. May as well just buy a new one. Here's something interesting. This chip is labelled Sienna version 1.8.1. .1. Here's a sticker I've just taken off the top of it. Come on, there we go. Um, however, the, underneath there is an Atmel 1019. 450614D? No, 450604, maybe 1D? Yeah, 1D. 
I think that's the brains of the, the guts of the system. That's the, the main chip. It's tiny. Let me show you how tiny it is. Yeah, it's pretty. Uh, but we'll see what we can do and see if we get any good results. I thought you might find that interesting, folks. Um, yeah, that's the Bose Tone Match T1 mixer. Um, it's quite robustly built. It just doesn't work. Um, maybe if I get it fixed, there'll be a bit on the end of this video showing it working, but if not, catch you later. Happy recording.